Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming and joining us today. All Black Vinyl, which is uh, my celebration for uh, Black History Month, celebrating Black voices and the Black music from the world that has shaped how we hear music today. And uh, the show is all vinyl. So I started February 1st and have been going every day, leaving little love notes to everyone who's, who's ready to listen, ready to hear. And uh, we are broadcasting not only on my Carl Craig Net Instagram, but we are also uh, broadcasting now with Dia. Uh, and this is in collaboration, but also in celebration of my piece, Party After Party, which is uh, showing at Dia now. And uh, I like that we're doing this nice tie-in because we're celebrating Black art and Black music and 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 uh everything black the vinyl that i play doesn't have to be black though the vinyl it could be it could be purple right <laughs> it's just that it's on vinyl <laughs> blue it could be blue it could be red it could be any of that kind of stuff so i've asked uh my friend and mentor and okay. jazz legend and uh the guy who's in outer space all the time. <laughs> we are <laughs> in outer space. <laughs> <laughs> to come join me uh, today on, the, on, our, on our first show here uh, with Dia. And we're going to do this every Thursday. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Francisco Mora Catlett. Thank you. Thank you, Master Carl Craig. Yeah. Master of Electronic Music and Planet Earth. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, we know that you've been to, been to Saturn a few times, right? Cause, uh, well, just trying to follow up the lead of Sun Ra, you know, and getting a, get a hold to a, at least our solar system. And if we can't go nowhere else, you know. Yeah. So, uh, you know, taking off for the planet Venus and uh, going around the moon, you know, catching up with Mars and further into Jupiter and Saturn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So tell me, because uh, it's it's interesting that <clears throat> that Sun Ra picked Saturn, but um, from reading his his uh, biography, there is that talk that you know for black people in America, it was a thing because life was so hard on Earth being black in America that. The only thing that you could do is to leave this planet. And by leaving this planet, if you don't die, then you're trying to go to Saturn. So did you talk with Sun Ra a lot about that? Well, you know, Saturn, in, in the, in the uh, symbolism of, uh, in Sun Ra symbolism, Saturn is the planet of discipline. So Sun Ra always insisted that it takes discipline to get into outer space. What we are in outer space. You know, we are in a planet that goes around a star, and we even have a little, you know, uh, satellite. We have a moon that goes around the planet. So we are in outer space. But in order to take off, we need some serious discipline. So he selected Saturn, you know, to symbolize the discipline that you need to carry on. Because he used to say that uh, beings out in outer space have a different kind of sense of humor. You know, mm -hmm. and if you're not really together, you might not think that it's so funny, you know. Mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> they might throw a they might throw a joke on you or a thing on you, and you might not think that that is really funny, you know. So that it requires it, discipline, <laughs> mm, right? <laughs> yeah, because um, you know we've talked about uh, we've talked about sunrise so much. Uh, I mean, of course, ever since I've known you, I've known you for. Jesus, almost 30 years. It's been about 25 years, I think, that I've, I've known. Wow. Yeah, it's been a long time. The time, the time, <laughs> the time goes past really fast. But, well, um, we're making good with the time, man. Mm. We're making real good with the time. Yeah, I'm trying to look good over here. Yes, you are, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, saw, 
I saw a video on your tube of you playing at the Chinese wall. I said, oh, yeah. wow, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did I did do that. Yeah. So um you know the what what Sunra did I don't think was entertainment. What Sunra did was art. And it was art at such a high level that it went beyond it went so far over people's heads is is crazy and um you know you're the one who taught me about the space court and <laughs> the space court itself is complete art because it has a way of driving you completely insane where you really <laughs> wanted to stop but then <laughs> once you get past that point then you can go into this to this other world. You can go into into a nirvana. You can go into something else. You can start hearing things more in detail because you know uh, with the space court the notes can go past so fast, you know. Or someone can be holding notes in the middle of of everyone else playing this cacophony of of of, uh, of notes, and and it's quite amazing. Um, so you know. I don't. I don't know how many people really look at Sunrise being a, 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 a sonic artist, not a not a piano player, not a not a, a, a jazz musician, but you know, not definitely not an entertainer. Because you know, one thing that that I, I like about Sunrise Legacy is that you know, if the room emptied, <laughs> then. You know that's that's part of that was part of the show, you know, um, <laughs> and I and I like that, you know, because of course, as a performer, as a DJ, as as whatever, you can sometimes just lose the crowd, and <laughs> some people they just lose their minds. It just hurts them so bad when the crowd loses, you know, when they lose the crowd. But I I actually like it when it happens because that means that I could be at a higher plane, and and it makes it quite. Uh, Quite interesting. You you re, you remind you re, you remind me of. A, 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 let me tell you a story, man. I, you know, so we out there, you know, playing, you know, and space court, you know, what I'm saying, and and uh, space is the place, and all of these things, and it's really intense, you know. And there is Sandra, you know, taking the lead solo, and this guy just gets up and comes in front of the stage and stays looking at Sandra, and all of a sudden he slaps him, uh. bam, and we're like, wait a minute, man. I mean, you know, so up on the guy and take him out and kick him out of the club and whatever else, you know. But we got admonished because it's like, you're not taking care of your leader, you know, guys, anybody <laughs> can walk in and slap the right. master. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, so. that, but that reaction, though, for somebody to actually have that reaction, it means that whatever was being done at the time was just touching another part of that person's, yep. you know, whether it's emotion or psyche or any of that. And, and it's, it's quite, it's a great, it's a great thing to talk about, like how funny it was, but you know, when you can go deeper into it, it's like, yeah, that's art. <laughs> <laughs> it, it touched something in his being. He says, wait a minute, man. stop. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? You know, but you're right, you know, in uh, um, uh, I really think, you know, believe, you know, this is my own conviction. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a humble man, you know, in, out of Birmingham, Alabama, you know, going through, you know, no musical education, no conservatory, everything. You know, like he used to say, whatever the creator universe sends me, I learned, and he did learn, you know, because... Whatever you drop on him on music, he just eats it up and takes it over and memorizes the thing and stuff like that. Very outstanding, you know, in, in the concept, you know what I'm saying? But when you say a sonic artist, that's like going a little beyond, you know, the rules of this and that and that and so and so. Because to be, you know, to be able to walk around in this planet conscien conscientiously, you know, um, not just believing, you know what I mean, but knowing that you are walking on a planet <laughs> mm -hmm. that is moving around a star, you know what I mean? Yeah, right. <laughs> that you are in a solar system, you know, mm -hmm. inside of a galaxy. Whoa, man, mm -hmm. you know, and we have galaxy, and you know this, you know, 
in, you're not just in terror, I said, but this is how you are. This is what it is, you know. And the music is your way of expression, or the word is your way of expression, you know. And all of these other disciplines, you know, sonic disciplines, you know, are the way that in visual, you know, visual, you know, are the way you you know for you to manifest that state of consciousness, mm -hmm. that state mm -hmm. of uh, knowing what's going on, you know, at that time. Mm -hmm. I really, you know. I have come to the realization that that's that's what that was, you know. Because mm -hmm. it's not like he dressed up the character; it's like he was the character. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's part of the art too. <laughs> that's great. That's uh, I mean, I think his character in music terms was probably closer to Salvador Dali. You know, what he was doing was was quite surrealist uh, in comparison to any other jazz musician or um, you know, maybe maybe there were some rock guys that kind of jumped on, like Dr. John or something. But then you have uh, uh, George Clinton later with uh, Dr. Funkenstein that comes, you know, directly from Sun Ra and Africa Bambata. What he what his image was was uh, was from from Sun Ra and uh, Sun Ra is is like really really a root and 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 a lot of music um, that people don't even realize how much of an influence in, in that. And uh, today on on my little segment, I played Space Odyssey, Marcus's Space Odyssey. Oh yeah, man, Marcus. And yeah. there's the part where it goes off. Yeah. So would you consider that a space court? Right, right. Blowing into the space court. <laughs> Coming and, out of a space court and blowing into a space court. <laughs> <laughs> and do you think it was, do you think uh, that was something that Marcus wanted to put up? Because knowing Marcus, I never heard him play anything outside of that that sounded like a space court. Do you think that was an influence from Wendell? To, uh, to... Yeah, you know, uh, Wendell worked with Sandra for a minute too. Yes. You know, Wendell Harrison. So, you know, we all uh, we all carry, you know, what I'm saying that out stuff. You know what I mean? And, and when people say like free jazz, yeah. you know, uh, not really. You know, we're just you know exploring right. and going outside. You know, but what is interesting over here is that it's coming out of the black experience. Uh -huh. You know, and uh, you know the uh, the fact is that you're out there in order to survive. That's mm -hmm. rule numero uno, your survival, you know. Mm -hmm. And then once that you get the beans from the table, you know, then you can be free, you know, a little mm -hmm. bit or whatever, you know. But during the manifestation, you know, I'm saying of freedom, you know, which is what I think that this music of the African, you know, the African American nature is, you know, is like, you know, once that the musician has got his act together, you know, his language. Mm -hmm. Whatever that might be, you know, you're in electronic music, you got a language of your own, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, and once that you get your language together, you know, and your discipline is happening and so, and you're on the bandstand performing, then all of a sudden you become free. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely free, you know, and the audience or the people that are looking at you, you know, they were like, I want to be like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I definitely want to be like that. And that's why I, I believe, you know what I'm saying, that black music in this planet, you know, is not just popular, but it's essential, you know, for people to be able to manifest some kind of a human freedom, some kind of a, mm -hmm. you know, freedom of their spirit, you know, or the way they feel. Right. Because, you know, we got people all over the planet, man, you know what I'm saying, that are suppressed or repressed in kind of a way. And right. in our art form, you know what I'm saying, you know, African-American, black music, you know, offers the opportunity to be free. Mm -hmm. you know, I really believe that's why Germans start doing techno. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> hey, I, we got we only got a little bit more time to go. Um, but for for the other songs I played uh, this week, uh, I played from Tony Allen, who's a drummer like you. Yeah, man. And from Fela Kuti. Yeah, man. And um, I played those to start out the whole, the whole series because they're from Africa, yeah, and of man. course, without Africa, there wouldn't be, you know, any of what we we do now. People would be listening to folk music and square dancing <laughs> if it wasn't for Africa, you know. So raves would be square dances. It wouldn't even be, 
<laughs> it wouldn't even it wouldn't even be anything to to for techno to to grow from. You know, it would just <laughs> that's that's it. Um, so so the African connection is um, you know the most important connection for modern music to me, um, and the third song uh, that I played was uh, Bobby Bird. Hot Pants, and it's a James Brown production. And if it wasn't for James Brown, Tony Allen and Fela Kuti wouldn't be doing what they do. You know, Fela, yeah, he he um, he was really in the Coltrane and stuff as a style for his for his uh, horn. But you know, those backbeats and what they do are like very you know James Brown. Tony Allen just had another way of interpreting it. Yeah, you know? right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And uh, how Tony and his percussionists uh, play together, they're definitely speaking and they're having a conversation constantly. And that happens with, with African percussionists anyway. It's almost like they're playing in Morris Code. And right. that's, that's what I feel from James Brown stuff, the heavy backbeat and where it goes. Uh, right. Is so yeah. Africa. Mm -hmm. and, you know, some and some, some his his, uh, his, his uh, definitely his on top. Right. You know, some something very something very important. You know, I'm saying to mention. You know, is that the African people that they brought to this country to the United States of America. You know, mm -hmm. um, to, you know, as slaves, they were totally disprovided of their original culture. It was completely taken away. There are other places in the continent like Cuba or Brazil, you know what I mean, where they were able to return, you know, part of their culture and they kept mm -hmm. playing their drums and, you know, and they maintain, you know, some, some kind of a way, you know, a remembrance of their culture. They still speak in Yoruba and Cuba and things like this, you know. Mm -hmm. But here in the United States, we were completely naked. You know, they took everything and brutally, Brutally, I mean, not a nice way, but brutally impose, you know what I'm saying, their own culture, you mm -hmm. know. And the irony about it is that the, with those elements, you know, you know, the African, we went to create, a, we went about the business of creating a new something with those elements in order to be able to survive the scene, mm -hmm. you know. And we created, you know what I'm saying, what is African-American culture, which is like the leading you know, a spear out in the front, you know what I'm saying, of what is about liberation, you know, of the human spirit. Mm -hmm. It's really important that, so the drum set, you know, is like gathering these elements and creating some kind of a way, you know, to, to be able to play drums, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's totally African-American, the drum set, and it's going all over the world. Mm -hmm. You know, it has got the characteristic, you know, like in Africa, you know, or in India or in Europe, to modernize, you know, every form of music without being an electronic instrument. It's mm -hmm. incredible, you know what I mean? Max mm -hmm. Roach dedicated his life, you know what I'm saying, to prove the validity of the drum set as an African-American instrument, you know. Mm -hmm. And it provides you and it gives you freedom, you know what I mean? It's all bass. You know, I don't have really any problem anymore with the tune, 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 tune. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, everybody played it, you know. Mm -hmm. If 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 you if 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 you're listening to you know like Cap Calloway you know what I'm saying you know mm -hmm. or uh, uh, any of the big bands you know what I mean the four on the floor was the way to go yeah you know right. and, you know and, and th there's so many stories about how you would walk in a in a in a ballroom you know you know back in the 30s or something like that you know what I mean and all of a sudden you open the door and you hear that bass drum. It's yeah. saying something, you know. This is Africa, you know what I mean, with mm -hmm. the elements that we were imposed, you know, brutally, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. to these people, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's incredible to, to, to realize that something that comes from that sort of uh, struggle, you know, of fighting has created, you know, something so beautiful and so mm -hmm. incredible, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm still amazed myself, you know, that, let's, you know, during the 40s, like Miles and Max and Dizzy, you know what I mean? Max Roach, you know what I mean? I mean, they worked in, in a very oppressive racist system where people were still hanging folks in the South, you know? Mm -hmm. This is like black history, you know? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know? And, uh, and they're in these clubs, you know, full of gangsters, you know what I'm saying, and drugs and prostitutes, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and violence. And even though 
like that, in those circumstances, they were able to create some of the most beautiful, incredible music that yeah. the human being has ever, you know, been able to produce ever. You definitely, know? definitely. It's amazing, man. Thank you, Francisco. You schooled us on that, and, and as you know, oh, we, can, we can uh, talk well, you, for, for you're days. Schooling me, you're schooling me every time <laughs> that I hear you, you, that I hear you play, you know what I'm saying, spinning, I'm going like, what? What? Oh, oh. How do he did that? How do he do that? I mean, what, is, what is he doing? Oh man! Wow! Whoa, man! <laughs> hey, so before we before we get out of here, yeah. Um, tell us about your mother, Elizabeth Catlett. You know, um, somebody asked me. You know, I'm saying, why was I born in D.C.? Okay, Elizabeth Catlett, you know what I'm saying, was under the uh, um, the artist grants, you know what I'm saying, from the 30s and the 40s. You know, the government gave, uh, you know, and different institutions gave grants. And she was here in New York. You know, she graduated from uh, uh, Iowa University, you know, the master's, mm -hmm. you know, the first, first, uh, uh, first ever person to have a master's, you know, on fine arts from the University of Iowa. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, uh, she had a, incredible exhibition, you know, that granted her her master's degree. She came to New York. But anyway, she was here in New York being an activist. Well, she should have been doing work. So they <laughs> told her straight up, or you get her in New York or we're going to take your grant away. Mm. So she went to Mexico, you know, where the artist is, you know, Diego Rivera, Frida Kahlo, you know, sent all of these people. And she met my dad, you know, so they fell in love and, you know, here I am. But anyways, you know, she had to you know what I'm saying, render the work that that grant, you know what I'm saying, was given her for. So she created a series of pieces that are very popular now. The Negro Woman, which is like 16 uh, prints, you know, engravements. You know, the uh, uh, the sharecropper, her signature piece, you know, and uh, some, te some, some sculpture, you know, in terracottas and things like this. And she took all of this to Washington, D.C., to the Barden Arden Gallery for exhibit. I just happened to be, you know, you know, well, she just happened to be pregnant with me at that time. Mm -hmm. you know? So here I am born in D.C. because my mother has to do an exhibition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not because anything else. You know? And my dad is in Mexico wondering what's going on. You know? Right. So I was never told about this, you know, until uh, uh, I saw I saw the prison and exhibition. And I saw the dates, and I said, wait a minute, 1947, December 19, I was born in August of 1947. What was my mother doing, man? Come on, <laughs> man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, that's how important her work, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and the dedication, you know what I'm saying, to her art was. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, if, if I have to, if I had to go to D.C. and carry this bay along with me, you know what I mean, so, so we mm -hmm. can do this exhibition, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. that's what I got to do. Right. So her, you know, so her determination, you know, what I'm saying, you know, is 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 consistent to us her life, mm -hmm. you know, like the way uh, uh, she became, uh, uh, you know, the head of the sculpture department at the University of Mexico City, you know, that mm -hmm. was part of that, you know, tenacious, you know, you know, way of being, you know what I mean? Because like the opposition was like, no, she's a woman and she's foreigner, but she became the head of, you know, what I'm saying of the sculpture department, you know, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, when when she got kidnapped, she was almost deported out of Mexico. You know, mm. some some federal agents came over and snatched her out while my dad mm. was, you know, partying with Diego Rivera or something mm. like that. You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I was the only one around. You know, what I'm saying because my two brothers were sick, man. And you know, when I was throw me upon her, man. You know, what I'm saying this is how it was. You know, so. I learned about struggle being involved in it, you know what I mean? Mm, mm. But it was incredible, man, because I grew up in an environment, you know what I'm saying, with all of these artists, you know, there is Diego, there is Frida Kahlo, you know what I'm saying, there is Cicados, you know what I'm saying, there is Orozco, El Tiger Gráfico Popular, you know what I'm saying, all these people, you know, and all of them were, you know what I'm saying, basically, you know, subversive folks, you know, activists, you know what I mean? And they render, you know what I mean, their work, you know what I'm saying, for human nature, for people, you know what I'm saying? You lift up their life condition. So my mother was like that, man, you know. Mm. Of course, during her life, she was very celebrated, you know what I'm saying, you know, especially after the civil rights movement, you know, because she sent a lot of artwork, 
-hmm. know, it got to a point where she couldn't enter the United States anymore, you know. Okay. So she kept sending her artwork. And that became inspirational for a lot of people doing the civil rights movement, you know. And of mm -hmm. course, she became very popular, you know what I mean? Um, you know, and, and it offered her, you know, she wasn't really allowed it to return into the United States. I'm talking like from the 40s all the way to like back 1976 or something oh, like wow. that. You wow. know, because uh, Howard University, her alma mother, rendered her, you know what I'm saying, a special doctorate, you know what I'm saying, you know. And uh, they collectively got together. No, no, wait a minute. In 1972, yeah, the collective of black artists in the United States got together and asked the Congress to allow her a special visa to do an exhibition at the uh, museum, uh, mm -hmm. at the Harlem Museum of Art, you know. Okay. And she was allowed to come for only 10 days right. and, and couldn't leave New York City, mm -hmm. you know. And she brought a staggering exhibition of sculpture and prints that people from all over the country came to see, you know, okay. at the Studio Museum of Harlem, you know. It was like the first time she came into... You know, and after that, 76, she came to Howard, you know, and then they got an apartment in New York and, you know, and continued coming. And, you know, she became celebrated, you know what I'm saying, at this mm. point, you know, on, on and on. And um, she left, uh, she, 96, that's when she took off mm. in Mexico, mm. at her house in Cuernavaca, Mexico City, mm. you know, during her uh, her sleep. Right. And, and she took off. Yeah. An incredible inspiration, man. Yeah. Powerful, powerful woman. Is she in Saturn? Um, I don't know, man. You know, I, <laughs> I will have to go find out. Man. You know, I haven't gotten no uh, no message from that, man. You know, but I know she's real happy. You Good. know what I mean? You know, and uh, she saw she saw Obama. You know, so she was very happy that we had a black president. Mm. But uh, Black Lives Matter. You know, well, she didn't get to that, but she knew that Black Lives Matter all along, mm -hmm. all along the way. That's what she did. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> all right, Ali Mora, we got to get out of here. Man, I'm so happy that we had this conversation. I haven't really seen your face, you know what I'm saying, for a while. Yes. So it was really cool, man. Please give my regards and the best to your family, you know. To yours too, please. And, yeah, thank you, man. And you know that I'm here for anything and everything, man, you know. Thank you. Thank so, you, pleased, uh, uh, so pleased uh, to have you as a friend, as a brother, you know what I mean? And as a mentor as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're my mentor. No, 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 no. no. Okay, okay, okay. Well, well, wait a minute. No, no. You have mentored me, you know what I'm saying, on electronic music tremendously, man. And, I, and, I, and, and I'm happy that I, you know what I'm saying, that I progress because with this pandemic, it's nothing but being home and going home without knowing nothing is going crazy. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> So I'm producing electronic music. Thank you, Carl Craig. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a great job, too. Thank you. So All right, much. Francisco Moore Catlett. Thank you very much. And uh, look out for his work. Uh, that's our World Trade music that we released years ago. And then what's the new one called? That, that's Electric called? Worlds. Electric Worlds. Electric Worlds. Yes. And all electronic music, uh, you know, production. You know, thank right. you to... Uh, Thank you to the uh, 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 to the gift of a dear friend of mine of a TR8, you know. Okay. <laughs> Thanks to Dia for hosting this today, and they're gonna Dia, host, yeah. host uh, me talking. Every man, I want to see that exhibition and hear the music, man. I never. Yeah, you gotta go up there. It's open. Yeah, it's open. Go see. Well, it. it's really open. Yeah, yeah, it's oh, been I'm open. Go over there. Yeah, I'm go see there. it. And yeah. actually, let me know when you're gonna go see it. Maybe I'll come and meet you there. Oh wow. Yeah, I'm looking to do a drive again. <laughs> okay be careful all right put the mask on <laughs> yeah yeah thank you very much francisco thank, thank you for you everyone so that's watching thanks for dia for hosting this and uh yeah we'll see you next week it's supposed to be jessica care more so everybody watch next week and uh you know i think we're gonna gonna do that uh we have it confirmed but let's uh just make sure things happen people get sick i hope nobody gets sick and uh, that we can continue this discussion next week. Yep. All right. Stay Peace safe. Love you. All black, all black vinyl. Yep. All black vinyl the show. Keep, black keep watching. Yep. Every day, new song for the whole month, okay? Black vinyl. Black all vinyl. black vinyl, baby. Black is all beautiful. Right. Black history month. Black, black vinyl. Yeah. <laughs>